Hello my photography friends, I hope you're well and safe and having a lovely day. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kevin Mullins, I'm a documentary photographer based in the United Kingdom and today my friends we're going to do something very different to anything I've done on the channel before so please bear with me and today we are going to turn some grainy grainy old really old black and white photos and I mean really old into colour. So we're going to look at photos like this and this and we're going to turn them into photos like this and this now appreciate that this is something a little bit different to the channel so please if you do think you need to go and watch something else watch something else on my channel rather than go to another one please that'd be great anyway you will need photoshop for this of course and it's a really simple process actually i've been playing with this idea for a long time i've seen lots of tutorials on the internet and you've probably seen some similar to yourself but i've done it in a slightly different way a little bit of a different take i guess and i really think you'll find it interesting especially those of you that have legacy photos maybe from your parents your grandparents etc these photographs came to me because i went to visit my mum a couple of weeks ago back in wales and she just gave me a whole load of pictures that my my grandmother had given her now my grandmother was a very very big hoarder of things so we have hundreds and hundreds of photos and I'm gonna go through a lot of them over the next coming several months probably to try and colorize them because I find it cathartic I find it interesting and it actually brings them back to life so without further ado we're going to go onto the computer go into Photoshop I'm going to go through a complete edit of the one of my grandmother bless her and I'm um, actually going to try and give her that life the look the clothes that she wore when I remember her when she was still alive she's a very important part of my life and I'll show you a couple of others as well along the way but that one we'll do in full and we will speed up parts of it because some of it's very repetitive but honestly it's very simple if you've got Photoshop you can do this yourself let's go So here we are in Photoshop. Now I'm using the latest version of Photoshop CC, but actually none of this stuff is that advanced or that new feature. So I think you'll be able to do this in most versions of Photoshop, certainly going back a few years. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rename the original layer. I'm gonna call it original. This is a scanned image. And I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna do that by pressing Control J on my keyboard or Command J for you on the Macs. And I'm going to rename that one to working. So now I have two layers, the original one and a working one. All I want to do at this point really is get the image ready. So I want to crop it and do some basic cloning and editing out any dots or spots or dust or anything like that. So I'm just going to crop it so it's a little bit straighter and get rid of those borders that were there from the original print. We'll get that right. Here we go. Just about there. Zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better, 200% or so. And I'm just going to use the spot healing tool to just get rid of some of these dust spots, as you can see, just popping them on there. Spot healing tool is really cool for this kind of thing. Gets rid of all of the, the kind of speckles and anything that's actually on the print itself, rather than anything that was in the original photograph, of course. So I'll just zoom in, move around the picture, do that. Now down here, we've got a little orange kind of glow. So I'm actually going to use the patch tool to do that. So I'm just going to drag over the, the edge, if you like, the burnt edge, and just move it up. There we go. Patch tool is really good for those kind of larger bits. And that just needs a little bit of cleaning up. So I'll go back to the spot heating tool. And I'm just going to spot over the edges just to, to try and make it all blend in together a little bit more. That looks good. Okay, so next thing we need to do is go to that layer, right click and choose convert to smart object. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to add a, um, a black and white mix. So I want to neutralize the colors. So by adding that, I'm adding a black and white mix, as you can see. And that takes us to a pure black and white version. So it gets rid of all of the orange, the color cast, all of that stuff. So we can work with a pure black and white image going forward. Okay, next thing we want to do is add in another adjustment layer. So back down to the bottom, adjustment layer. And this time I'm going to choose levels. 
So what I want to do now is bring some contrast back into the image. I'm going to pull in the blacks and the whites and you can see the image there on the left. It's just getting a little bit more definition. I'm just trying to make the edges a little bit more obvious and just overall make the levels of the image better and, and a little bit more defined to give us a better starting point. There we go. Okay, next thing we need to do is go up to image and we're going to change the color mode, mode, color, to CMYK and that gives us the four base colors that are suitable for printing. And it's gonna ask you whether you wanna merge the layers. So we will do that, of course. And that will give us our basically starting point ready to start colorizing the image. And this really is where the fun starts. Now we have to try and remember, or well not remember in this case, but try and think about what clothes, what color, what color the face was, the hair, all of those kind of things. And we're gonna do this by creating a series of solid color adjustment layers, okay? And it's very straightforward. It might seem a little bit confusing at first, but let me show you how I'm going to start with the coat. I know I always remember my grandmother wearing this beautiful deep green colored coat. So again, new adjustment layer. This time we'll choose solid color and the color picker will come up. Now it doesn't matter if you get this wrong at this point, okay? We're just going for something that we think is about right. I'm gonna rename the, the layer to coat so I know where I am. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. That's really important, changing the blend mode to soft light. Next thing we have to do is make sure we select the mask. That's really important that you select the mask on the right hand side and you press Control I, Command I on a Mac, to invert it. So that essentially means that we're gonna be masking against the black color. Next up, we're gonna to switch to a brush. You can press B on the keyboard or press the brush tool on the toolbox on the left hand side. Set your brush up. I'm tending to go for a, a kind of medium hardness. And then it's just a case of brushing it all the way in. Uh, on the coat, of course, and you'll see the soft light is what allows us to, for the shadows, etc., to re remain natural, remain neutral throughout. So it's a case of going through the whole thing. Now I'm going to speed up parts of this so we can get a really solid view of how this is going to look. Next thing we'll do, same again, solid color. This time I'm gonna do the buttons. So I'm gonna go for a kind of off black, little gray twinge to it. I'll call it buttons. And remember to set the blend mode to soft light. Where is it, where is it? Ah, soft light. <laughs> there it is, soft light. Control I on the mask. And it won't take a second to do the buttons. I think there's only two or three of them. So we'll just go over them. You see how it's just painting over those nicely, darkening them up a little bit. And that's good, those, those buttons. Okay, so I think we'll do the shirt next. I think she's wearing a shirt and a scarf, which is quite hard to see. So I, I'm just gonna pick a random color initially for the shirt, and then, I, and then I'll show you how we can, we can change the color as we go along. Okay, so blend mode, again, soft light, control I to invert. We'll find the shirt on the picture itself, which I think is that, that little bit there. And actually now I know that the color isn't quite right. So I can just double click on the layer itself and pick color accordingly. So I'm gonna go for this deep blue. I like the, like the look of this deep blue. Select the mask, make sure I'm using my brush. And away we go. Now this is quite tricky this little bit. So I'm gonna be changing the brush size accordingly just to do that little bit there. So I think she had a blue shirt on, underneath and then a scarf above it. Now, to the scarf, same thing, solid color. Pick the color, I'm gonna go for a nice red, I think it might have been a nice red color. Choose okay, change the text to scarf so I know what it is. Blend mode, soft light, control I, command I, and then I can brush it in. There we go, looks good. Now. I've noticed down in the bottom right hand side that there's a little bit of the, the arm missing. So if I go back to that mask on the coat, I can just go back down there. It will remember that it's green, of course, because that's the color of the mask. And I can just finish that little area up, tidy it up. Nice, so it's already coming together. It looks really nice already. I love those colors and it definitely reminds me of my 
my lovely Nana. Okay, next, solid color. And we're going to go for the skin next. Now again, remember, you don't have to get this exactly right. Uh, let's just type that in so I know what it is. Skin, blend mode, soft light, control I, and then I'll start painting. Now remember, you've got to do things like lips and eyebrows and eye color a little bit later. So be a little bit more cautious when you're doing your painting on this one. Okay, looks a little bit ghoulish right now, but we need to add some color to the lips. So solid color. Let's look for a nice red for the lips. Uh, something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Lips. Blend mode, soft light. Control I. And away we go. Now again, you've got to be a little bit careful. Try and get yourself right with the colors. And again, remember you can adjust all this stuff later. You can go back and color over, color repaint, change, remove. So I'm just gonna fast forward the whole of the edit now, the whole of the color blending until we get close to the end. Here we go. Okay, this is looking good, wicked, I love it. Uh, nice colorful image, of course, it's not gonna be exactly accurate. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to group all of the color edits into one group there. So I'm gonna hit the little folder icon in the bottom right-hand side of the panel, and I'm just gonna put them all into a group called Coloring. Okay, final touches. I'm gonna add a photo filter now to try and warm it up a little bit. So hit photo filter. I'm going to choose the warm filter. As you can see on the left hand side, I'm just moving that across. Uh, I'm going to go to the flush and change the opacity. Now the flush was the thing that added the little red cheeks in the color blending. So I'm just changing the opacity a little bit. And that looks a little bit more natural. I like the warmth that the color mode, the color blending has brought in there with the filter on top. Okay, and pretty much the last thing now is we're going to add another adjustment layer, curves. I'm gonna scroll down until I find a linear contrast. Uh, where is it, linear contrast, come on, there we go. Linear contrast, that just gives it a little bit of depth. Again, uh, Command, Control E to flatten the image. Now one thing you might wanna do is also at this point do a uh, unsharp mask, filter, sharp and unsharp mask. Changes as accordingly. Now I, 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 it didn't really work on this particular image, um, so I'm gonna cancel it out but that might be something you want to do depending on how much uh, contrast and how much clarity the image has lost during the edit. Okay, so final retouches, if any, that are needed now. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just going to, I'm gonna duplicate the layer, I should say. I'm just gonna use the burn tool. Uh, Mid-tones, exposure about 50%, maybe bring it down a little bit. I'm just going to darken a little bit of the highlights on that face there, so just bringing them down a tiny little bit and that's good I'm gonna merge it again and I think pretty much we're good to go and here's the before and after so obviously the one on the left is the before one the one on the right is the new one that we've edited and I think it's lovely it really is lovely and of course it's not gonna look like a perfect picture it's a little bit cartoony perhaps in some cases you might want to adjust your editing accordingly but it's really really straightforward and simple all you have to do is remember to do those solid color blend modes uh, and you need to do a soft light filter and control i or command i to invert the mask and then paint away and you will have a loads of fun okay i'm going to go through one more very quickly i'm going to speed it all the way up so i'm not going to show you any of the steps this is going to be really really quick it's my great 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 grandfather and this photograph was taken in 1870 believe it or not have a look at this.
Okay, what did you think? I thought I was a lot of fun, actually. Um, it's not something necessarily that you're going to be doing all of the time, but, you know, if you have a little bit of time, such as maybe perhaps if you're a wedding photographer with no weddings to photograph, then you can kill some time with this. Anyway, listen, uh, this weekend I'm off with my wife. We're going to go and have a, uh, a nice weekend together, uh, hopefully, as long as the government doesn't get in the way first and make us wear masks and sit six metres away from each other and all that stuff. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely weekend ahead. And I shall see you next week in the next video.